So we finally get the drone back. The police and customs came on board to inspect the boat one last time. We are officially checked out of Morocco. And uh, yeah, now it's time to go. We're gonna do a little brief. And um, we're off. Those are both ready to fly off. Yeah, I think so. All right, time to go. It's a little, uh, I wanna say nervous. But we know that we are going to encounter conditions that may be a little out of our comfort zone. I'm not too worried about it. I'm not too worried about it. We did that when we crossed Biscay. We know that the boat can handle it. We know that we're making the right decision by going now to dodge the storm that is coming at the end of the week. We'll see how it goes. Huh? Yeah, just go for it. On our way.
What did you think when you chose to wear Crocs today? I wasn't thinking about that way. <laughs> It's uh, 6.30 um, on the first day, the sun is uh, just setting right now. Literally there is nothing else, nothing left on the starboard side of the cabin, everything passed to port. The winds are rocking the boat a lot, we have between 25 and 30 knots. Um, and we have waves, pretty big waves, uh, 2 to 3 meters on the beam. My face! is salt. It is crazy. I have like this crust of salt on my face. Kelly and Linia are feeling so-so. Ryan was also feeling so-so before he took the helm. Surprisingly, I'm the only one that's like 100% okay. This is insane. It is insane. But that's what we have. So. This is better like two hours ago. I can't stay in the cabin. Yeah. Good job in here. How's it going Ryan? That's no, alright. It's alright. It is uh, 8.30 and I just barfed. <sighs> it is, um, I don't know, I think it's 4.30. 4 the sea state is a little bit better, the winds have gone down. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can make some porridge because we need food, we haven't had food. I uh, fed, fed the fish all of the food that I had in my tummy. I believe in myself. Earlier uh, today, Kelly asked us if um, of all the passage we've ever made, if it was one of the worst. In a, in a, like on a scale from zero to ten, zero being the best passage and ten being the worst passage. How, we, how would you rank this one? And I said, oh, a good seven, seven, eight. It's not very good. I think that if you were to ask me right now, I would say 15. This is a 15. So this is our third day at sea, uh, on our way to uh, Lanzarote in the Canary Islands. The winds have now shifted behind us, um, which makes the motion of the boat a little better. I couldn't film anything yesterday because I was too seasick. Uh, it took me the entire day to recover from that. Uh, I upped my patch of scopoderm to a full one. I was only on half one earlier. Um, so Ryan and I are feeling okay, but uh, our crew is uh, destroyed and I'm starting to doubt if we're ever going to see them fine until we arrive.
How's it going, Ryan? It's going pretty good, I think, for me. What's our ETA? Thursday night, I think. Thursday night, and today is Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. afternoon. Yeah, so that's we have a little over two days. Here. Ready? Yeah. Let it loose. Keep yours tighter, honey. Okay. Keep yours a little tighter. Our twin headsail setup has been easier to reef than we thought. So that's good, but the winds aren't insanely high. Uh, I mean, it's just about. 25 knots we reefed in true so but that's good so we got them quite small right now because the winds tonight might pick up quite big uh, but we'll see maybe we pop them out a little bit more to stabilize the boat some and keep some speed up so we get there faster for our sick crew but we're going pretty quick right now doing about seven knots so but we have learned a lot and that's what's important and the weather today was beautiful. They are in bed yeah. with a little basket of food on the table with water bottle each, blankets and pillows, earplugs, eye masks, and most important of all, a new round of scopoderm. Hopefully tomorrow they are back with us. Midnight, and we are right at the beginning of our fourth day um, crossing to the Canaries. I have been laying in our cabin for the next four hours trying to get some rest. Uh, I haven't had any sleep. Essentially, I've just been tossed around in the aft cabin. The waves are big, and uh, I'm a little nervous getting out and realizing, like, actually, how many are just the feel of it. This is crazy. Oh, and I smell really bad. How's life, Ryan? It's okay. I would prefer these waves to be in the dark, not the sunlight. <laughs> yeah, no shit. You can really see that it's blowing 30 knots now. You want to know what our gust record was? No, 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 I don't. These waves are like. Just kind of everywhere. Yeah. There's no flow of them, you know? No, I know. And some of them are quite big. I see that. It's 24 knots now. Alright, what was the, the worst gust? Do you really want to know? 40? 45. No way! Yeah, it's on the wind meter. Oh no! I took display like a couple times, so I have it like 40, that's the maximum. Oh no! I, I wasn't back there when it happened, like, but that's, I was back there when it got to 40 a couple times. That's spooky! It was the boat, you know, I have another theory about the, the sails. I think that the, like, we have them so small that when a little bit of air hits like above 30, 33 knots, uh -huh. it, it helped keep the boat going straight. Yeah. 
No, I think so because the boat is fairly stable. Like, but, yeah, when the wind drops like 25, low 20s, it starts doing this. Okay, interesting. Know? It's a theory, I don't know. If it's Right, because a couple times we'd be in the 30s, like mid 30s, yeah. and the boat wasn't rocking like this. Huh. It was just like cruising along. And uh, these poopy conditions are supposed to calm down in a few hours. The winds are, the waves, I guess, will last well. It takes a few hours for the waves to die. Right. But by this afternoon, I would say. Those waves are insane. Yeah. We've never. We've never seen this before. No, this is the biggest sea we've ever And they're gross. They're really gross. Yeah, I know, I see that. It's like, the buff. But I think this is what everybody has run into. You think? Going down here, yeah, I really think so. And I mean, it all happens right in here for some reason. We are right in the middle of the acceleration zone, are we? You want to take over? That's what I'm here for. I could use a snooze. I understand. Oh my god, look at that one. Yeah, we've had lots of ah! them. Watch, they come again. It usually comes in groups of three. Oh my god, this is not nice. Ooh! Look at that! Yeah. Oh my god, oh my god. What we don't want to do is get our beam on the side. That's not kind of what the autopilot did the same. Yeah. Because if we turn it and we screw that up, then we can get knocked over. Yep. If we just keep the bow going forward, generally. Yeah, those are big. 
Isn't he cool? Julina, you've uh, obviously learned way more than you wanted to about seasickness. Yeah. <laughs> now you know. Yeah. You did well though. You're you're still going strong. You're going strong. So this is our very last night on board on this crossing between Tonga and the Canary Islands. Our crew was doing slightly better earlier today. They came out and they ate a little bit. So far everything has been staying in their stomach, but uh, still not enough for them to uh, take a night watch. So tonight Ryan are back again on four hour rotations. I am on from eight to midnight. Ryan is on from midnight to four. I'll take the first thing in the morning watch and tomorrow we should be arriving somewhere in the afternoon um, so yeah last night of sailing Good morning, it is 6.30 and we are just arriving in Lanzarote. We're probably gonna have to sail for a few more hours because we're just seeing land, but we're seeing land! The sun isn't up yet, although I'm seeing the first signs in forms of really beautiful pink clouds on our port side. We're still gonna have to sail for another yeah, a few hours until we arrive at our marina, which is located in the south of Lanzarote. It's called Marina Rubicon. So we're really tired, but I think that this experience was a lot worse for Kelly and Nina than it was for us. I feel so bad for them. Um, I really hope that this experience does not discourage them from going, going sailing offshore. But yeah, we will debrief in a few hours when they can uh, set foot on land and uh, all of a sudden all of their pretty cannons will disappear. Okay. Hello! <laughs> the yeah. cargo oh. escaped from its cages. Look at this! <laughs> I figured I would wake the guys up for sunrise. <laughs> It's beautiful. Turn around. Yeah, it's beautiful. Throughout my watch. Oh, 
Thank you. Woo. Milkshake, chocolate. Yes. That's one. All right, cheers, cheers guys. guys. To a very cheers. successful passage. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Sailing in conditions like this does not happen often at all. And as a matter of fact, this is the absolute worst that we've ever had it in the two years that we've been cruising full time, including our Atlantic crossing. The passage to the Canaries is notorious for being a little bit gnarly. And the Canaries are sometimes referred to as the house of broken dreams. That's because a lot of boats are there for sale after their crew had a more or less successful passage there. And a couple of years ago, that would maybe have been me because in those conditions, I would have absolutely freaked out. And looking back, I'm really happy that Ryan and I took a couple of years coming down from Stockholm, one season in the Med, and built up a bit of experience before we started doing some really serious offshore passages. We were ready, the boat was ready, and yeah, our crew was ready as well. Unfortunately, seasickness can happen to absolutely everyone. Our crew were relatively experienced sailors. They own a boat, they have been sailing in the Baltic for an amount of years, and they just wanted to acquire a little bit more offshore experience before taking their sailing to the next level. None of us suspected that we would end up in this situation, that they would get really seasick. But on the bright side, they get to experience it on a boat that was not there and we were there to take care of it. Our crew had a super positive attitude and they were great throughout the entire passage. And it did not take them long to get back on the horse. I think that Linnea was sailing two weeks after this happened. So this was not a bad experience, but it was a really good learning experience for all of us. I want to give a mega shout out to all the patrons that have joined us lately. Kitty, Heidi and Franny's Garage, great channel. Jisa, Howdy Ho, Simon, Sander, Dwayne, Phil, Darren, Igor, Tim, Rick, Clay, Michael, by Densa, probably pronouncing that wrong. Captain Randy, Shane, Per Ragnar, David, and Jeff. Thanks to all of you guys, I have been able to replace some of the gear that got broken in all of this offshore craziness. It was a lot, and for that, I am eternally grateful. So thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you can't get enough of the waves, I have compiled all of my waves footage in one video. The link is over my head somewhere. And until next time, goodbye!